and thank you very much to all people present here. I feel uh, honored. It's a pleasure for me to be here in this uh, distinguished group. Um, I'll try to give you an idea about the, the program of the Belgian presidency. I will not go into all the details. I brought some documents with me that for those who really want to see the last letter of this program, they can find it there. I also brought some uh, books about the, the Belgian model. If you have questions about the Belgian federal model, there is a very good explanation inside these books. I don't have books for everybody, but um, I don't know if, if you have a little library or so, or you can circulate them amongst you, or there will be a way to, or, or duplicate them, or whatever. So, um, this uh, Belgian presidency, rotating presidency, as they say, of the, the Council of the European Union, started on the 1st of July and will run till the 31st of uh, December of this year. Um, last week, last uh, Tuesday, exactly a week ago, I did this presentation in the EU House for the press, because the press is always very much interested, as you are also. And it created a little bit of waves. Uh, I was a bit surprised, but I don't think it's... Um, it's, it's uh, so special, I mean, everybody is so focused on this Cyprus problem here that they will see the Belgian presidency or the Spanish presidency or the Hungarian presidency through the eyes of what is living here, and it's, it's only normal. So I, I suppose after this presentation you will have some questions as regarding the Cyprus issue or Turkey or other things that you discuss in your circle. Uh, I think there was a presentation a few weeks ago about Turkey and EU, so these are things that uh, are evidently interesting for you. Now let me start with this presentation. I have to push a button somewhere, yes. Uh, the Belgian Rotating Presidency of the Council of the European Union. Um, Rotating, I think you all understand this principle that um, in this uh, new framework, framework created by the Lisbon Treaty, you, um, you now have a permanent president of the European Council. His name is Herman van Rompuy. He was our former prime minister in Belgium. And um, it means that the rotating presidency is no longer presiding this type of council. We preside a lot of other councils. Uh, you have, apart from the European Council of Heads of States and Government, you have ten other formations of the, the council. One of them is uh, foreign affairs, sometimes enlarged with uh, ministers of defense uh, or ministers or, of uh, development. This, this uh, type of uh, council is presided by Lady Ashton uh, so in, the, in the new context. So where will Belgium be presiding? We will preside all the other ones, which are nine other council formations, uh, going from the General Affairs Council to Education Council, a Transport Council, Economic and Financial Councils. These nine, I uh, didn't name them all, but these will be presided by Belgian ministers. When I say Belgian, it doesn't always mean federal Belgian because more than half are presided by regional ministers. So there was a, a council of, uh, informal council of environment yesterday presided by the Flemish minister of environment. And she will also preside the meeting in Cancun, the, the summit on climate. So um, it's not because we don't have a, a government yet after the elections that we cannot function. We have uh, six governments altogether. If one doesn't function, the, the five others uh, still work and, and make things go, go on. Uh, but I'm talking too much instead of... Um, well, this is the, the outline of the presentation. Uh, we'll have three points. The, the Council Presidency, I already explained a little bit what it's about. Uh, the, how this program of these six months was prepared, in what context. And then I'll come to the main elements of the Belgian program, 
There are five main clusters that I will explain to you. And uh, the transversal theme is the implementation of the Lisbon Treaty, which started in, um, under the Spanish presidency, but which is not finished yet and which will continue under the Belgian and probably also partly under the Hungarian presidency. And then we'll come to a, a conclusion. The whole presentation will not take longer than 15 minutes, I think, but it leaves us more time for a discussion uh, on this uh, subject. Uh, the, the Council Presidency, the main characteristics um, are uh, given in Article 16.9 of the Treaty of the European Union. This treat treaty was amended by the Lisbon Treaty and it now reads that the Presidency of the Council configurations other than the foreign affairs shall be held by the Member State on a rotating, uh, equal rotating basis. Um, it means what I said earlier, and that we will preside, not the foreign affairs, but the nine other um, council configurations, uh, plus all the corresponding working groups that go with, with the preparation of the councils. Uh. And this is also what, what Cyprus will do in two years from now, second half 2012. You will, you will have the same type of job. Um, now, as Europe is changing a lot since the, the Treaty of Lisbon, when everything will be put in place, many of my colleagues in Brussels say that the, the rotating presidency will slowly disappear. It's fading out. Um, already now, uh, in our presidency, um, it's because we are inside of Europe that I still have a little role to play. But outside of Europe, it's the European delegation that takes over the complete rotating presidency in, in all the countries outside of Europe. Um, so little by little, and because we then preside this most important council, the European Council of the Heads of State, which is now in the hands of this permanent president, uh, we, the, 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 the rotating presidency loses quite some weight. Huh? We, we cannot influence, let's say, this uh, decision-making process within this European Council. I mean, we can try because we are Belgians and the president is a Belgian, but that's a specific uh, context. So um, we, we take care of these nine uh, council configurations, which means we have to uh, program them, uh, put a date on it, rent uh, a room to hold them, organize them, chair them, uh, respect the rules of procedure in, in all this, uh, formulate compromises and negotiate agreements with the European Parliament. And this is now very important in the Lisbon context this European Parliament has become very powerful. Uh, about 95% of the decisions now are taken by the procedure of co-decision, which means that uh, the Parliament and the, the Council will have to, to convene on a decision. Uh, and that's not always easy, it takes a lot of time, and it's something new for the Parliament as well, so they have to to see what their capitals instruct them to do. And so it's, it's a, a new context that will take some time to be uh, settled down. But once it's settled down, this European Parliament will be one of the most powerful in the world. We can compare it to the American Parliament in a way, but it will have a, a really a, a lot to say. Uh, nothing can be decided without the approval of the Parliament. And this is the new context we are moving into, this new Lisbon era. Uh, now, um, our ministers were asked a lot of times, uh, how will you do the presidency when you don't have a, a real government? Huh? We had elections the 13th of June, and we are still discussing, and it will probably take some time before we will have a, a new government. Uh, and the, the, the answer they give in that case is, well, we, we have a lot of experience. We have a Belgian tradition of doing this thing. Uh, it's our 12th twelfth, um, twelfth presidency. Uh, even a caretaker government can, can take care of this one. 
And as I told you, a, a lot of these councils will be presided by regional ministers. So if we don't have a federal government, it's not so, so bad, uh, let's say. And then we have a lot of uh, experienced diplomats uh, in Brussels. We normally we have about 120 in our uh, uh, permanent representation to the EU. Now it was uh, uh, reinforced uh, up to 200 uh, experienced diplomats work there, uh, let's say day and night, um, to to make this uh, presidency a success. So we we think things will go well. And we also hope that by September we will have a government and they will discuss all summer and I hope after the summer holiday we will have a presidency, uh, um, uh, a government that will be able to do the, the four months of presidency because as you know the second half of the year is a short presidency. The two months of the summer not so many things are happening because of the holidays. So it's in fact September till December is the real action. Uh, over the years uh, since, uh, as you said, we are amongst the six founding fathers of the EU and, and when we were only six the rotation was of course a lot quicker than, than with 27. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why they say um, if we go to 30 or more members of the EU, uh, the rotating presidency will be every 15, 16 years and will not have the same type of continuity. It will have less powers, so maybe it will disappear, maybe it will disappear altogether. Uh, but over the time, uh, Belgium has built up a tradition as a honest broker in the European interest, um, and uh, we always try to strike a good balance between ambition and realism and we are also known for a pragmatic attitude. I think in times of crisis, as we know now, it's, it's, it's good to have a, a quiet, pragmatic attitude towards uh, these, these things. Um, then we come to the, the context in which this presidency takes place. We call it a radically new and difficult context. Radically new because uh, because of the Lisbon Treaty in, in the first place, also because we are 27 member states. Um, in our last presidency was in 2001. There were um, uh, a lot less, I think 15 or so in the time. And then came the big uh, enlargement in 2004. But these 27 member states, uh, of course, are all different. Uh, they have their different uh, histories. You have uh, small countries, big countries. You have countries from the north, the south, the east, the west. Uh, and they have their own different uh, regional groups also. So uh, what we try to do is to, um, to have a good coordination between all those different um, interests and, and um, from the different countries. Uh, in that context, it is worth n also noting that since Lisbon, we work uh, in a trio context for the presidencies. My presidency is, is part of a trio with Spain and, and Hungary. Uh, this is also a, a, a way to better coordinate this uh, type of, of presidencies. Uh, so we have a country from the south, Spain, uh, one from the middle, let's say, uh, Belgium, and one from the east, uh, Hungary. It, it already, because we make a common program for 18 months, it already means that we have to put in different views and, and find common ground between the different views. The next uh, pres uh, trio presidency, as you know, will include Cyprus, uh, also Poland and uh, Denmark. So also three different regions of uh, the European Union. Uh, the Lisbon Treaty uh, introduced uh, some new procedures. The, the main one is, uh, I think, this procedure of co-decision, which gives all the powers, or a lot of powers, let's say, to the European Parliament. Uh, we also have the new functions that you know, uh, the, the permanent president of the Council, Mr. Van Rompuy, and uh, the, um, the vice president of the Commission, Lady Ashton, who is at the same time presiding the, the Council of Foreign Affairs, 
and who is to become, <coughs> under the Lisbon Treaty, the, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Europe, let's say, uh, with, a, with a known European diplomatic service that, that is also underway. Um, we have a new commission since February 2010 and a new European Parliament, as I said, with a lot of new powers since last year. Uh, we are faced with a, an important legislative backlog as a lot of the new directives uh, have been waiting for the, the new Lisbon procedures to be applied. Uh, one of these decisions that was waiting in the fridge is, as you all know, the direct trade regulation. Uh, this was put in the fridge and came out now uh, through this Lisbon Treaty and the new uh, procedure where the Parliament picked it up, uh, saying we have to say what we think about it, uh, and that's what's, what is happening now. And then, of course, the, the difficult context is the economic and financial crisis, uh, the biggest crisis in 80 years. It's, it's not something that will go away tomorrow. It needs to be addressed in a serious way if the European Union and the Eurozone in particular, particular want to be a strong economic bloc compared to China, the US, uh, Russia and other India and Brazil emerging powers. So let me say a word about the preparation of the presidency program. As I said, uh, we did it together with Spain and Hungary, our trio colleagues. It's um, a program for 18 months, which means more continuity than six month, than a change every six months. Uh, we, we share the same program during uh, a year and a half. It means enhanced coordination and mutual assistance if needed. Uh, of course, the, those who have more experience with one or other subject will help the other one. Uh, a Mediterranean country will know more about the, the Mediterranean context and will, will be helpful for a Scandinavian country, let's say, to, to share this experience and, and vice versa. Uh, we attached a lot of importance to uh, the principle of bringing the EU closer to the citizens or to bring the citizens closer to the EU, uh, the way you want to see it. So in preparing our program, we had a lot of um, consultations with the civil society. Uh, we also created an interactive website, and I think Cyprus is doing the same now to, to see what, is, what people want to put on the, on the European agenda, what they think is important, the questions they have, and to take these elements into account in, in the presidency program. We had seven, seven seminars with the civil society and different meetings between the ministers in, in each domain and the civil society. And then our presidency program was adopted uh, after the European Council of June 2010 because, of course, you have to wait what the Spanish presidency was going to finish or not and until the last day, the, the last day of their presidency, they opened a chapter in the negotiations with Turkey so we, ha we had to wait till the end to know what we could put uh, in our program. Uh, former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia, they are still discussing their name and other things, but we hope that some progress there also will be possible. And uh, of course Turkey, which is more interesting for you, I think, we hope for improvement, but we know it is a long-term effort. If possible, we look at the opening of two chapters, or, or at least one chapter, uh, that would be competition or public procurement. But of course, they have to meet all the benchmarks in order to do so. Uh, and there was a lot of, quite a lot of criticism when Spain pushed to open uh, the chapter of food security uh, at the last day of their presidency, because this, uh, what they call fast track procedure, was not, uh, let's say, um, well accepted by all the members in the EU. Now, um, we come to another important theme, the transversal theme, that's the implementation of the Lisbon Treaty. I already mentioned the uh, European uh, External Action Service, the European Diplomatic Service, 
if you want uh, the target day to um, start with, this is 1st of December of this year. As you know, the European Parliament uh, a few days ago accepted the, the proposals of Lady Ashton, so now we can really work towards the implementation. It will start with about 1,500 diplomats in, in Brussels, uh, working for as a kind of Ministry of Foreign Affairs for Lady Ashton, and about 800 abroad. And at the same time, all the EU delegations outside of, of Europe will be transfer transformed into EU embassies. Uh, with the result for a number of countries that they will close a lot of embassies because the EU will take over, let's say, a lot of these competences. Um, we'll have uh, different budgetary adaptations following the implementation of the Lisbon Treaty. Of course, this foreign service has a price also. Huh? They, they say it will be a zero operation, but it means they will have to cut in other domains or or the, the member states will have to add, uh, say if they bring in their diplomats. Uh, th this has to be sorted out now uh, under our presidency. Um, implementation of some treaty innovations like the Citizens Initiative. I think you need uh, one million signatures from a, a relevant number of member states. And if you, if you succeed in this, you can bring uh, a specific subject directly to the European agenda. But a number of uh, details or details uh, like uh, is an electronic signature acceptable or not have, has to be, have to be sorted out. Uh, the European Convention on Human Rights, it's about the implementation of the EU membership in, the, in this convention. It is uh, mentioned in the Lisbon Treaty that apart from the individual membership of the, the EU states, the EU as a whole, as an institution, has to be a member of the Convention on Human Rights also. Comitology, uh, this is about uh, the, I don't know how many there are, um, probably around 100 or more different committees, uh, financial committees, regulating committees, controlling committees, advisory committees, and so on. They, all these committees have to be adopted toward to the Lisbon procedures. Um, and then we'll have to help the new institutions to work and to find a good balance between the Council, the Commission, the European Parliament and the rotating presidency. Those are the, the big players and they have to play together in a team, otherwise we will not have what we call one voice, uh, that Europe would speak with one voice. And then we already come to the conclusion, which is very short. Belgium will conduct a sober and pragmatic presidency with the strong will to keep the EU going in times of crisis and institutional change, changes. Sober, I mentioned last week the price of 11 euro per person, uh, per Belgian, let's say. That is the price we have to pay for this uh, six months presidency. Um, altogether, it, it is about 110 million euros. So we are 10 million people in Belgium. And I think I heard or I read 50 million for the, the Cypriot presidency, which is very cheap in a way. Huh? I don't know if you, I don't know how they make their, their calculation. Huh? Um, we will also care in a general way for the smooth relation with the EU in institutions and with special attention for the European Parliament which has become a very strong Parliament now. So with these words I would like to conclude and, and I'm ready to answer your questions, which I'm sure you will have. Thank you very much.